Hello everyone! It is so good to see you. Um, so this is something, something new. No, uh, this is something that people have been asking me to do since I started my channel 10 years ago. So, uh, we are finally getting around to it. We are gonna play Eagle Eyes Mysteries in London. And it would help if I was clicked into my DOS box screen. Now, I've played a lot of Eagle Eyes Mysteries 1. I did play this a little bit, but at the time I did not have, own a copy of the copy section, so Ooh. I generally um did not finish this game. But I, I own a copy of the copy section now, and uh... Oh, wow, that is loud. Ah, that's alright. Yes, yeah, so Jake and Jennifer have now come to London. Yeah. They're just gonna wave at us. It's just always good to see them. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you kids. Nice. Yeah. It's just, just gonna it's just gonna keep going. We waiting for music. I don't Hello? Oh, you're waiting for the enter key. Okay, great. <laughs> but uh but yeah. I have to put a last name in. Um I'm their weird older cousin. I am female. Oh, I'm coming from America! Um, and of course, we have to go with the smarter twin. Um, I've always seen, you know, Jake as your more streetwise kid. Um, I did not remember him having red hair. I thought he also had brown hair like his sister, but apparently I was wrong. Um, but we'll go with Jennifer, because I've always seen Jennifer as... Oh my god, wait. I, I, can, I can make her... I can control her eyes. Um, <laughs> oh! Um, now that's interesting because I thought I did the version without dialogue. Oh no, so they just, they just chip in from time to time. Okay, so I decided like the original, I'm going to be doing the audio. Welcome to London J- uh, ugh, gotta get my voice down though. Oh my god, yeah. Welcome to London, Rizalka. You're just in time. Jake is on his way from a special assignment from Scotland Yard. When you're reading, when you're through reading this, click your left mouse to go on. <laughs> Go on. Soon as Jake gets here, we'll go over the top secret new crime busting info that we'll use to get things done here in London. In the meantime, let me fill you in on the latest and show you around. I'm Jennifer Eagle, of course, you know, we've always considered that you're like a weird cousin, so let's just go with it. And this is the garret upstairs in the house my Aunt Miranda and Uncle Basil own in London. My brother Jake and I are hanging out with them all summer. Which you knew, considering we're going by weird cousin that hangs out with us. Okay, cool. We plan to take a vacation from all the work we do back in Richview at our Eagle Eye Detective Agency, but it looks like the mysteries just pop up wherever we go. I kind of figured that might happen, so I packed the Travis, you know, that weird tablet thing that we had before tablets were a thing, and brought it with us just in case. The text retrieval and visual imaging system is our own electronic detective's notebook. I've even added a cool new couple of new cool features. I can learn to read. <laughs> Here's how it works. When we're on a case, I'll enter all the clues we uncover into the Travis. When you want to check the notes, just click on the Travis in my hand. Or in Jake's hand, you know, if you want to go with Jake, but you, you really don't. I know. The Travis will display all our notes for you to check over. That way, when you're finished investigating, you can use the clues to figure out who done it. If you need help working out the Travis works, I mean, you've you've done it before. You you played all 99 cases of the previous game, so well, there are 99 videos of them. Oh my God, what what, what did you do with your life back then? Um, and uh, you'll get an explanation of its features. I've even put a few notes in there to help us get around. You're not going to use them, I know. Let's get, <laughs> let's catch up with Jake here later. Let's go downstairs to the kitchen and I'll introduce you to Aunt Em and Uncle Baz. Whenever we go anywhere, we ch always start by checking out the map of London. You can tell the place we should head first because that place will be marked with a flashing red diamond. Just click on that diamond and we're on our way. And of course, our first place to go is the place that we were already at, downstairs, the Eagle's house. I'm just gonna walk in here. This is my Aunt Miranda and my Uncle Basil. I think you can guess which one of them was the British person. If you would like to talk to them, 
Click inside the glowing box that surrounds them and they'll introduce themselves. When you're through done talking to them, click on the box through the door to the left. Then we can Oh, we can head back up to the garret and see if Jake's back yet. If you want to leave, you can always click on my beautiful shoes. Um. Hello, Jennifer. So pleased to meet you. Oh, hello, Rizoka. I forgot who I was talking to. <laughs> You're the other cousin from the other side, clearly. Let's see. What can I tell you about myself? I'm Jennifer and Jake's Aunt Miranda, but you would know that because, again... The story I'm going, we're sticking with, is that you're a weird cousin that hangs around. You're probably my child. I work as an investigative reporter for the Times here in London, so I often get hot news tips that Jennifer and Jake can help me research. More often than not, there's a mystery to be solved. In fact, I just got a call from my friend down in Scotland Yard, Inspector Gage. Hmm, he's got such a case. I'm not sure of the details, but it has something to do with the theft of a priceless Egyptian statue from the British Museum. Oh my god, I'm gonna win a Pulitzer. Wait, hang on. Wrong country. Scotland Yard is London's official police headquarters. You and Jennifer can meet up with Inspector Gage there. He'll fill you in on the details. We're going straight to the top. Hello, Rosalka. Pl thrilled to make your acquaintance. I'm Jennifer's Uncle Basil. Hmm... I must say, it's quite a relief to see that you're uh, here to help out. We seem to be surrounded by puzzles and mysteries here in London. As an author of mystery novels and, uh, oh sorry, mystery stories and other novels, I seem to come into contact with all sorts of strange problems. Like, where are my glasses? There are some terrific advantages to being a rather well-known author, if I do say so myself. <laughs> One of those is that I've become quite chummy with Mr. Sneed. Oh, there was a Mr. Sneed in the previous game, but let's forget that. The head of the librarian at the uh, British Museum's famous British Library. That's where Adventure X is this year. Oh, not many people get access to those special libraries and all the facts and information therein. But you will. Whenever you want to go research the anything at the library, just click on the British Museum button on the map of London. I know, so simple. Whenever you, s oh, whenever you see the mouse cursor turn into a picture of me on the go, just like this one, it means that this place has led to another room or place. This way takes us back up to our garret. Let's see if Jake's back. That is a new feature that was not in the previous game. Oh my god. He is here. God dang it. There's Jake now. He's my twin brother. And about the coolest boy I've ever met. I have not met many men. I am just saying. If you run your cursor over... Oh wow. Well, don't run your cursor over anything. <laughs> Whew. Uh, over the glowing box around the note next to him, you'll see it turn into a magnifying glass. That means you can look at it. Wow. Yeah, you can examine it, like that note that we were just talking about. When you're, yeah, like I said, click on my shoes when you want to leave. That'll take you back into the kitchen and then go again to the map. Cool. That does not, I thought that would be the note, not this. This is my, uh, this is a special assignment I was telling you about, Jennifer. Except you didn't talk to me, you went straight to the note. Cha. Inspector Gage said this note was left at his office, addressed to the Eagle Eyes Detective Agency. Someone must have heard about us from our newspaper clippings in Richview. I know. People really care about newspaper clippings from a small town in the USA about two twins solving crimes. Ugh. From what I could gather from Inspector Gage, last weekend someone stole the priceless Egyptian uh, statue of a cat, Goddess Bassett, from the British Museum. Scotland Yarn has no leads at all until this note arrived this morning. It's our only clue. So let's trust two 14-year-olds to solve the crime. The note reads, Little, uh, <laughs> little cat statue came from the Nile, stayed at the Br British Museum a while. McCavity came to take it away and drop it at Covent Garden one day. All the little kitties lined up in a row, fake ones and a real one, all ready to go. McCavity watched to see what was done. The head beef... Uh, eater of beef, he claimed the true one. Hmm. Only the cleverest of eagle eyes will find my special feline surprise. If you get the answer to my poser, you'll get a kitty back, or else it's no sir. Poser? What's that? Like, one of those British slang words? Luckily, Jake and I put together a little British-American dictionary uh, in the back of the eagle eyes handbook. Grab it and see if you can work out what a poser is, Rosalka. You don't need to tell me. 
That's right, Rizalka. Poser is the British term for riddle. Or, you know, someone who's just being false anyway. W whatever. Anytime you come across a strange British world you don't understand, just grab your handbook and look it up, right? M mate, am I saying that right or is that Australian? I don't know. <laughs> I know that one, Jake. Mate is what the British people call their buddies. Or are those Australians again? I, I'm, I'm a bit confused. I can't wait to get back to the States to try out these new words on my mates. Yeah, I, th I think they might think you're dating them, Jennifer. Maybe don't. Uh, okay, well, this poser's got me stumped. Remember, if you're stumped when you're trying to solve a mystery, just click on your partner's face while you're in the Travis computer screen and you'll get a hint. For now, my hint is to head to Scotland Yard. <laughs> sure thing, Jake. I typed some of this poem into the tra- oh, only some of this poem, weird, uh, into the Travis, so you can check it out if we need to. When you're ready to go, Rizalka, we can just click on the Travis to see the notes. So when you're done reading, we click on the Travis to get back here again, and then click on the Travis map to get the map. Wow. 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 Rizalka, great to see you. I've got to fill you in on the latest Eagle Eyes operations. Here's the scoop, and don't worry if you don't catch it the first time. Jennifer will type it into the Travis for you so you can check it at any time. I will be doing nothing. In fact, I wouldn't mind if you left the room for a little bit. I'm saying 13. Come on. First off, our map of London has some neat extras. When you go to a new side on the map, a glowing diamond will appear on the spot. When you click on the area near that diamond, You'll zoom. Wow, I'm tireder than I thought for some reason. Uh, you'll zoom into a closer view of the map, and the smite marker will be there when you click for you to click on. I can I can read. <laughs> when you've examined everything in a sight and there's nothing more to check out, that diamond will stop glowing. You can still go back there and review what you've seen if you what you've seen if you like though. People will look at you strange to ask them the same questions though. But keep an eye on those diamonds. Sometimes as mysteries get tougher, new evidence comes up at an old site. Well, that's a new thing. And a diamond might begin to glow again. That's your cue to go back to that site and see what new stuff is happening there. Here in England, lots of places have bunches of different rooms in them. Like the garret here at, M at Miranda's and Uncle Basil's house. Remember to check out those rooms really carefully so you don't miss out any clues. To solve, all the to solve the mysteries, you'll need to read all the clues in Travis and figure out which clues really prove which suspect is most likely to be guilty. Yeah. You can always... Oh, you can always pick up to five clues. That's not how it works in other things. Uh, but if you, if you think that you can prove your case in fewer clues than that, select two to four clues that you think will do it and then hit solve. If... Wow, it is late. Uh, if... <laughs> If those clues solve the oh, wait, if those clues solve the case by themselves, you'll get to pick your suspect straight away. Don't be hasty though. A good eagle eyed detective always reads the case notes and chooses the clues carefully. Yeah. Sometimes you'll need to solve solve puzzles too. That's also a new thing. Or read your map to get the compass directions. That's also new. Jen and I have packed all this stuff that you need into your eagle eyes handbook, and just make sure you hang on to it in your maps. Your Google Maps. Oh, wait, no, wrong wrong decade. Sorry. That should get you around town, okay? Town? Town. Good luck, Rizalka. Wow. Wow. Oh, look at that puppy. <laughs> That's Inspector Gage, Rizalka. Just click inside the glowing box to talk to him. Whenever your mouse cursor turns to speech bubble like that, it means that the person is someone we can interview or talk to. When you're ready to leave here, Rizalka, just click on- we, You know, we've been over this. Go. Hello there, Jennifer. I don't know why I speak like this, but let's just go with it. This must be Rizalka. Miranda just called up and told me all about you. We can certainly use your help today. I'm afraid the rascal McCavity is up to his or her old tricks again. Just who is McCavity, Inspector Gage? Oh, I don't know. I mean, if only we knew. I'm afraid that's just it, Jennifer. No one knows who he or she is. Every time we think we're close to catching the fiend, he or she simply isn't there. For, so far, the pranks have been annoying, but mostly harmless. 
For example, last year on April's Fool's Day, McCavity somehow introduced a computer virus into the police data banks. The machines were spouting this ridiculous poem for three days. Which poem are you talking about, Inspector? Oh, it's from T.S. Eliot's old possum's book for practical cats. You know, the one that inspired the musical Cats. I'm sure you can find a copy of it round at the British Library. And let's try not to sing, because you should be quiet in the library, yes. It seems that McCavity's latest trick has been stealing the statue of the Egyptian goddess Bassett from the British Museum. The note I gave to Jake suggests that the statue was placed among a group of souvenirs at Covent Garden yesterday. Oh, they were supposed to be simple copies of the Bassett statue, worthless souvenirs, really, but according to the note, McCavity somehow replaced one of the fakes with a genuine uh, ancient Egyptian statue. Hmm, now some innocent shopper has a priceless Egyptian artifact gathering dust on his or her mantelpiece. We must find the person who purchased the statue and return Bassett to the British Museum. Cool. Oh, Inspector Gage's file on the case lists the possible owners of the priceless original statue. According to the Covent Garden sales records, only three people purchased statues of Bassett at the market yesterday. Um, the buyers were Mr. Har Hargreaves of the Tower of London, Ms. Mardy of the Warwick Castle, and Nigel Eagle of South Kensington. Oh, how, how strange. <laughs> Nigel Eagle? That's my cousin. He was supposed to be at Covent Garden today with his friend Gay. Gale? Gay? But let's, let's just go with Gay. Cool. Rizalka, you'd know him. He's your, your brother, cousin. Oh, that's Victoria Station. What we got over here? Tower of London, British Museum. Let's go to British Museum. We might as well. Woo! The British Museum is so unbelievably cool. It's got room after room of ancient e uh, treasures and blah, blah. treasures and art. Jake and I love the Egyptian room. It's full of mummies. The British Library is just one of the fantastic sections of the museum. The library has jillions of books and documents, and a lot of them are original copies in the handwriting of the author. Oh my god, yes. Not a word of my, my powers of deduction tell me that you're Jennifer Eagle and Result Eagle. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're right. How did you know that? <laughs> Elementary, my dear young sleuths. From your colonial accents and your garish clothes, I deduce you must be Americans. Your inquisitive looks led me to believe you may be detectives. <laughs> my newspaper artifact, article, uh, archives from America contain stories of a pair of young investigators newly arrived on our septed isle with the names precisely. <laughs> they also mentioned a Jake, but who cares about him? Uh, with a hundred, with a genius IQ, little escapes my notice. Uh, why am I working in a library? I'm just saying. And <clears throat> your uh, Uncle Basil may have called to say you popped by to do some research. Mm. Nothing to do with that. Aha! Mm -hmm. If you would like to find out some more about the statue that was stolen from our museum, you'll need to go and look up information on Basset, the Egyptian cat goddess. I've set some books aside if you were over there. Here at the British Library, we have to do a lot of research for ourselves. Since we're trying to find information about Bassett, we'll need to figure out which book has that information. Have you heard about the Dewey Decimal System? Oh. Oh, actually, this is a lot more simple than that. Okay, Rosalka, pick the book you think that will be most likely to tell us something about Bassett. Uh, uh, well, it won't be Greek mythologies. <laughs> uh. That's right. To find out information on Bassett, we need to check under the we need to check the encyclopedia under B. That would be the volume that has information from A to C. The encyclopedia has an entry under B for Bassett. The cat goddess Bassett was worshipped by the ancient Egyptian people. She was supposed to bring good fortune and protect from evil. All cats were sacred to Bassett, so priests of Bassett would often. It would take great care to feed the cats that frequented her temples. Wow, that seemed to be a, that seems to tell us a little bit about Bassett, but doesn't really seem to help our case much. 
Hmm, didn't that note say, note say something about beef? Let's look under beef, too, just in case. Okay, let's see. Beef, we the meat taken from cattle. Okay, we knew that. Oh, but look here, Rosalka. The next entry is beef eater. Hmm. Oh, my God, I made a noise. Hmm. It says that beef eater is the nickname of the yeoman wanderers, the people who would guard the Tower of London. Hmm, that's strange. One of the people who bought the cat statues was from the Tower of London, remember? It says here, no one is sure where the nickname Beef Eater comes from. It might have something to do with the fact that yeoman wanderers, warders even, were paid enough to eat well during the times that other people might not have been able to afford luxuries like beef. Hmm, to be sure, we should head over to the tower and check out those beef eaters, if you know what I mean. The library is a great place to check out all kinds of stuff. Let's see what this book has to say, that T.S. Eliot poem that Inspector Gage told us about. It says that T.S. Eliot was one of the greatest American poets. He wrote some pretty serious uh, poetry, but he did publish a book of funny cat poems called Old Possum's Book for Practical Cats. And then the musical was practically about which one of them was going to die. It was it was weird, but you know it's a hit show. Okay, this po this book is full of poems about cats. It looks like McCavity took his name from the poem called McCavity, the Mystery Cat. <gasps> Who would have thought? Here's a copy of it. Hmm. The f the first stanza of the poem reads, "McCavity's a mystery." No, we let's not get ourselves copyright infringement. Um, uh, he's called the Hidden Paw. For he's the master criminal who can defy the law. He's the bafflement of Scotland Yard, the flying squad's despair. For when they reach the scene of crime, McCavity's not there. The description pretty uh, sure matches Inspector Gage's crook, McCavity. This is a great book. Next time you're down at the library, Rosalka, you should check it out. These cat poems will crack you up. Not really. No, no, no. Is Tower of London over here? Yes, it was. Bim, 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 bim. Ooh, factoid. The Tower of London was originally built by William the Conqueror in 1066. It served as the site of the Royal Menagerie, Royal Observatory, and Mint, as well as being the residence for every British monarch from William I to Henry VIII. The Tower has housed many accused traitors as they await execution, including Sir Walter Raleigh and Anne Boleyn. Okay, that that's all? Cool. Done. Oh, here we are. This huge old castle near the Thames River is called the Tower of London. The place is just packed with history. Jake and I learn something new each time we visit. I know. I, I know I keep reminding you about how to get out of here. Y you know. Wow. <laughs> wow, what a great costume. There's no costume, long lady. This is my official uniform. Let me introduce myself. I am Mr. Hargreaves, and I am the chief warrior here at the tower. All of the beef eaters, or yeoman warders, here at the tower are under my command. We are all former officers of the Majesty's Armed Forces with distinguishing service records. So, you're the head beef eater? You could see that. Any time you come visit the tower again, just ask me and I'll be delighted to give you a tour, provided you can pay the wage. My wages. Wow. But you're not going to ask him about the statue you bought? No, not at all. Well, we can pretty much already guess that he's going to be the one who has it. But, you know, let's go over to the other places. Let's go to Covent Garden. <laughs> Covent Garden is a great place to go shopping. Jake and I always find the coolest souvenirs here. Look, there's Nigel and his friends Gay and Dorothea. Let's ask him about the statue he bought yesterday. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you don't know how to leave here already. None of the booths at Covent Gardens are selling any kinds of cat statues or Egyptian souvenirs today. Hi, Jennifer. Is this your friend Rosalka, who's probably also my cousin? Ha ha ha. Pleased to meet you. I'm Jennifer and Jake's cousin, Nigel. What are you doing here today? 
Uh, actually, Nigel, we're looking for you. We're trying to find out more about that cat statue you bought here yesterday. Oh, how did you know about that? I was going to give it to my mate Gordon as a birthday present. I mean, it was just his birthday yesterday. I'm a bit late, but here you go, Gordon. Mate. Uh, 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 oh, sorry, I forgot where I was. He's just mad about anything Egyptian, and he really likes cats. I mean, have have you seen his cat, Pouncer? It's very cute. Uh, no, ne never mind. When I saw it yesterday, I nearly dropped my fish and chips. It's just the perfect thing for old Gordon. You said you were eating fish and chips as you shopped? Absolutely. Can't make it past the chippy. Oh, change my accent again. <clears throat> On the corner without grabbing something to nosh. Makes my mouth water just thinking about it. I just bought Gail and Dorothea by to show them the fab Egyptian goodies this fellow had for sale. But it seems he's closed up shop and gone off. Ah, oh, well. Can't talk to them at all? Okay. Who cares about them? Ah. From Victoria Station. Uh, from Victoria Station, we can take a train to any kind of place in London. You can tell where we can go today by checking the schedule board. Look, Rizalka, work is highlighted. Click on the name of the schedule and we're on our way. And I hope they don't ask me the coffee protection because I don't have it on me today. Ah. Surely not for the sample case. Um, on our way over, I'll show you the latest feature I've added to the Travis. The video travel guide. Just click down button for more information and done to go on. I mean, you already kind of did that, but... Oh good, you didn't ask me about the train times. We'll get on to that another time. <laughs> uh, Warwick Castle in Warwickshire is one of the finest examples of medieval castles in Britain. The castle, now owned by Madame Tussauds, was, I don't know if that's still a thing anymore, but let, let's go on with it, was first built in 1086 by William the Conqueror. Many great earls of Warwick uh, ruled this castle, including Richard Neville, who was also known as the Kingmaker, for his part in the War of the Roses. Complete with the grim dungeons and majestic battlements, Warwick Castle looks over the River Avon and acres of gardens where the cry of the peacocks can be heard. Done. Warwick Castle is just one of those excellent places we get to visit during our stay in London, Rosalka. Check out those towers. You just can't go past a good tower, I'm just saying. When you're, well, yeah, just in case you don't know how to leave. Yes, I did purchase a statue at Covent Gardens while I was visiting my sister in London yesterday. Uh, working here at Warwick Castle as a tour guide, I get rather tired of looking at armor and swords and tapestries all day, so I try to dec decorate my home in sweet little knickknacks. That cat, sh cat statue is a lovely little cat in the old Egyptian style. I'm terribly fond of animals, you see. In fact, I'm a vegetarian. A vegetarian? So you don't eat beef? Heavens no. I don't eat any kind of... I don't eat meat of any kind. Unless it's a man, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'm, y y y you're a bit young for that, okay. Hmm. Hmm. So is that actually a map that I have in my... Travis? It is a map that I have in my Travis. That is impressive. Let us... Actually, no, we're about to solve the crime, so we might as well go back to Scotland Yard and be like, <laughs> watch me solve the crime in front of you. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's right. She's a... Wow, that is a very bouncy train. And like me, she doesn't suffer from motion sickness. Okay. I'm sure we can work this out. I'm pretty sure I've already worked it out. Okay, so. Don't need any of that. Yes, the head eater of beef. Yes. Uh, da, 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 da. That's a clue. Boop, 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 boop. That's one. Yes. Solve. Terrific! That's the evidence that we need to get the museum's cat back. Now pick out the person who bought the real Egyptian statue by mistake! Mr. Hargreaves and Shaw. You got it! You got it, Rosalka! Yeah, baby, you got it. 
McCavity's note said that the real Egyptian statue of Bassett was placed amongst a bunch of copies at Covent Gardens yesterday and that the head eat eater of beef bought the genuine one. Inspector Gage discovered that there were only three people who bought souvenirs copies of Bassett's statue at Covent Garden yesterday, Mrs. Madry, Mr. Hardgreaves, and my cousin Nigel, the prick. We found out that Mr. Hardgreaves is in charge of all the yeoman wanderers, or warders, <laughs> at the Tower of London. He's the chief warder. Since the yeoman warders at the castle are also called beef eaters, that would make Mr. Hardgreaves the head beef eater, or the head eater of beef. His cat statue is a priceless Egyptian artifact. Rizalka, you're going to make a terrific member of the Eagle Eyes Detective Agency London branch. I mean, you were pretty much the OG at the original one, but you know, let, let, let's just go with it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, gotta love, the, gotta love a good scrapbook. Ooh, shorter novels. American detectives retrieve Egyptian artifact. A rare and valuable Egyptian artifact stolen from the British Museum this week was returned to today thanks to the cracked investigative work of the detectives Rizalka Eagle and Jennifer Eagle of the American Eagle Eyes Detective Agency. Rizalka figured out that the genuine statue had been hidden amongst the display of uh, copies for sale at Covent Gardens and accidentally purchased by the chief warder Hardgreaves from the Tower of London, explained Inspector Gage at Scotland Yard. The crime itself was committed by the mysterious criminal known only as McCavity, stated museum officials. Rizalka figured out that the note left by McCavity referred to the beef eaters of the Tower of London and traced the cat statue back to me, noted Chief Warder Hardgreaves. I was going to return the artifact to the museum. Oh, I was glad to. Whoops. And have Rizalk, uh, invited Rizalka and Jennifer to join me and the rest of the beef eaters for the famous ceremony of keys at the tower tomorrow night. Well, that was handy, wasn't it? Anyway, so that would be our practice mystery that happens. So we are going to come back next time. And um, let's see how many mysteries we have. It's only suggesting two scrapbooks, but as we found with last time, you know, once we finished those, suddenly the challenge book came up. So that might be the case as well. Ooh, we are gonna be busy! Maybe not quite as busy as the original, but you know, like, what's it called? They, it seems to be, the cases seem to be more involved, so, um, yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Um, so yes, I'll see you guys later. Bye-de-bye! -bye.